When we talk about empathy, we tend to use the word loosely to mean something like compassion, if you hear it used colloquially. So we'll say, who do you need more empathy for in this question? And usually what we mean by that is who do you wish you cared more, ab more about or who do you wish cared more about you? Right now you might be having a little bit of a feeling that I might be uncomfortable because of the sound. And that's another kind of empathy where you're kind of feeling into my experience or sensing what it's like to be me and feeling maybe a little bit of discomfort. You sense maybe I'm a little nervous and you're tuned in to my experience. You know what my experience is. It's another kind of empathy. This is the kind of empathy where you can envision what somebody else's experience is and really sense what's going on with them. They tell you their story, you put yourself in their mind and you're like, okay, I know your experience. That's the other way we use the word empathy. You may or may not care about that person's experience, but you know what it's like for them. And I'm going to talk about empathy and show you empathy in a whole nother way that we don't tend to talk about that much, but that is what I mean and what people are increasingly meaning when they use the word empath. So an empath, as I use the term, is somebody who feels other people's feelings or emotions as if they were their own. Meaning, uh, if you're sad, your sadness somehow, in a way we don't yet understand, comes into my body and I start feeling sad. It's not that your sadness triggers sadness in me. I'm not sad that you're sad. I'm sad with your sadness. And this is what I mean by an empath. Uh, Think of it like yawning. You yawn, I might yawn. I've somehow caught your yawn. How did that happen? We're not really sure. Uh, neuroscientists are trying to figure that out as far as yawns go, and they haven't gotten very far even with that. And they certainly haven't gotten very far with this um, phenomenon that I'm talking about, about being an empath and actually feeling other people's feelings. Out of curiosity, just so I feel centered in the room, how many people here identify themselves as somebody who regularly feels the emotions of other people, regularly. This is something you're familiar with. And on the far end, uh, on the other side, um, you're more than welcome here. In fact, I'm happier you're here than all the rest of us. How many of you uh, don't really know what the hell that would mean or have no real relationship to the idea of feeling other people's feelings? Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Just a couple uh, more or less willing to acknowledge. And for all those of you not willing to acknowledge, uh, I appreciate that too. I might be shy to acknowledge that in this room too. Um, I'm getting comfortable in, into my rhythm here. I was a little nervous, oddly. So we're talking about this kind of empathy, the empathy where you feel other people's feelings. And I would say, as you saw in this room, that this is a fairly common phenomenon. It's almost no big deal. It happens all the time. And yet we don't really talk about it. It happens so often that we're, we are often regulating other people's emotional systems by understanding what's going on with ourselves without even acknowledging that we're doing that. So if you're working in a close context with another human being, you are unconsciously often having a physiological experience that mimics theirs, and then you are adjusting your behavior to their experience in order to make them feel bad, better, or maybe feel bad, I don't know, depending on wonder what unconscious thing I was channeling there to make them feel better. So we're constantly using this ability, but what we're not doing is talking about it, hardly ever. I mean, increasingly more and more, but hardly ever, to the point where this kind of stuff, even though it's omnipresent, is also hidden in plain sight. What tonight is about is about that subtle experience. It's about presencing those subtle ways in which we experience another person's experience and can use that experience for their benefits. That's what I mean by being an empath and that's the focus of this evening. It's about the subtle experience. What I've done is practice a lot. Um, 
I discovered that I was extremely sensitive to other people's feelings and that for years I was clogged with them. Uh, my, I was heavy and dense with the emotions of others and I went through a process that I'm happy to describe later of releasing these emotions until the point where I felt so sensitive to other people's feelings that I could just simply name them by feeling what I was feeling. Uh, this is obviously inexact, but over time it became more and more exact and, and then more and more useful until the point where I started to do it um, uh, in one-on-ones, um, as I would call them readings, I would sit with them, I would tell somebody what I feel they were feeling and then I would offer some guidance around what I was experiencing they were experiencing. And then I got so into doing that uh, that I started to do it as performance, like check out how empathy can look at the extremes. And in a minute I'm gonna show you that. And then after I show you how I do it, I'm going to lead you guys in an experiment to try to do the same thing to the extent that you can play with it. Um, so I'm going to show you the, the extreme version of this and how I do it, and then we're going to play with having fun with what it would mean for you guys to just play around with this. And I, I don't expect that um, you'll come away going, I can do this, but I expect, I hope that you'll come away going, huh, that was really interesting. That was a new kind of experience that I wasn't used to having, and that maybe may means something, and maybe I can use that a little bit. Okay. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I'm just really feeling into what I want to do next and how I want to do it. And. Okay. I'm going to go backward. Uh, I'm David. I live in New York. I'm 38 years old. Uh, I used to direct commercials and documentaries for many years. And then a few years ago, this ability started to take over, like it had a life of its own. And then I just started to play with it as I was exploring, as I was sharing. And now it's become almost what I, what I do. It's kind of an, a, a fun accident of my life. And I'm used to doing it more and more in spaces where people are very, very open to this kind of thing. Uh, bookstores that are kind of new agey or assemblages of, uh, assemblages of people who really are like all into woo-woo stuff. Um, and there's, there's this incredible responsiveness, but I'm most excited about doing it um, among groups that are more analytical and more critical. Uh, because I think that there's real magic and something special in bringing in this kind of experience to places where it doesn't normally fit. So that's why I'm really excited to be here today and to share this with, with you guys. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Thank you for your attention. I really appreciate it and for bearing with me as I flounder a little bit up here. I think what I want to do is show you how I get started and so that you guys can do it with me. So we're going to do a little grounding meditation. And this is what I do before I do readings so that I feel centered and you're going to do it with me if you want. If you don't want, that's cool too. Um, and ideally, you want your feet on the ground, but if that's not possible, so be it. And what you definitely want to do is not be touching anybody else. So if you're touching anybody else, separate. And you want to close your eyes. And what we're going to do here is we're going to release everything that isn't ours that we've picked up over the course of the day. So we're going to take it on faith that over the course of the day, by interacting with people, we have unknowingly picked up some of their energy here and there. And this is the moment where we're going to release it so that we can center in our own energy. So we start by having our eyes closed and just imagining with me, imagine if you will, all of the 
energy or the stuff, the mist, the vibration of the people you've been around today that you've picked up. Imagine all of that stuff starting from the top of your head and imagine it rolling down your face, rolling down your head toward your neck and you're just picking up this mist as you go, all this stuff that isn't yours, down into your chest. And if you're not seeing anything, that's okay. Just trust that my voice is doing the work. And if you are, that's great too. Or if you're feeling it, feel it come further down, down your chest, down toward your stomach, all the stuff that isn't yours that you've picked up without knowing it pulling it down, down toward your hips, down, and then across your thighs, toward your knees, all this stuff that isn't yours, and then down your calves, toward your feet, and imagine it going out through the bottom of your feet, through a cord or a line, whatever you envision is great down, all this stuff that isn't yours is going down your whole body, down through your feet, and now down into the center of the earth. And now it's gone. And from the center of the earth, just envision clean, pure energy. And just a little of it. Pull just a little of it up into your feet, just what you need, not too much, like sucking from a straw, into your legs, up your calves, across your thighs, pulling up this clear energy, and then it'll spread all on its own around your chest, down into your arms if it wants to, this clean energy, up your throat, your neck, spreading into your head and your face and the back of your head and the top of your head. And then, if that feels right, leaving it spread as it is around the body. But if you like, you can let it out through the top of your head, up to the sky. Just take a little note of how you feel right now. See if you feel a little more centered or a little more grounded, a little more unto yourself. And if you don't, that's totally okay. You might not. And then when you're ready, you might want to touch your hands or rub your legs or rub your knees or whatever you need to do to come back to the space. And then, when you're ready, back to me by opening your eyes. I think I really needed to do that, so thank you for joining me. But it's also important, when we're playing in these subtle realms, to do our hygiene. And this is a really good way to start when you're going to connect with somebody, to sort of release what it is you already have, so that you can be more true to your own experience and therefore more open to the experience of whoever you're with. So I'm going to do a reading. And the way I read is in layers. I start by feeling what the person is feeling right now, and then I go deeper into what I feel they're feeling on a deeper level, or what's going on with them in life beyond this moment. For instance, whoever I pick might be nervous sitting with me right here in this moment, but that doesn't mean they're nervous all their life. That doesn't mean that in their day-to-day -day they're not feeling great. So I tune into that level, and then I go even deeper into what's really animating them, or what I believe is animating them, or what I feel is animating them. Maybe there's some deep anger, or this inner something that we'll see in a moment, depending on who I pick. And then I do this other thing, which I can't explain, but just seems to happen, where I tune into somebody on a very, very deep level, 
and I experience what I believe to be as something of their core or who they are in their essence. And I express that to them as well as I can. And then I offer some really gentle guidance based on what I feel. As you'll see, this is an extremely inexact science. And I am straddling the line between psychology, uh, energy healing, performance art, um, and guessing. <laughs> what I'm feeling in my body, there's no, as far as I know, conscious choice about it. The experience I'm having is just what I'm having, and then I'm expressing it as well as I can. What you'll see is, as these feelings come into my body, my body starts to express them physically. This is no different than if you're feeling angry, and you let that anger express itself through your body. So if you're angry, you might naturally want to punch your knees or hit your fist or get really tight and clench. That's all I'm allowing to happen. So I'm taking in the feeling and then I'm allowing the feeling to express itself through my body. The way my body is expressing itself, it doesn't feel like I have any choice over. I'm not at all consciously directing it. I'm allowing it. And then there's the other part where I'm using words to describe what my experience is. And in that, I'm making all sorts of conscious choices. There's nothing magical going on in what I'm expressing. I'm merely doing my very best to express what my body is taking on in language that makes sense. So there are many ways this is inexact. Maybe I'm projecting something onto this person and just seeing myself in them, very possible. Maybe I'm actually taking something on of theirs, but because I have similar experiences, I'm seeing it through my own lens and mischaracterizing it, very possible. Maybe I'm taking on something of theirs and I'm having an honest experience of it, but my language isn't exact, possible. And maybe I've got everything right, but it bounces right off them because they're not yet ready to feel what they themselves are feeling, so it doesn't land. Any and all of these things are possible. And while I really do love the experience of getting things just right, um, I think it's even more important even though my ego would disagree, to show and bring forth the messiness and murkiness of these things. Because we're all doing some aspect of this in our day-to-day -day lives, but here I am making a show of it so we can see it and play with it and learn from it. So rather than invite people to raise their hand and then me making a really difficult decision, I'm going to pick a volunteer in another way. Um, if you don't want to do it, that's okay. But I'm going to ask if there happens to be a Jim here or a James who'd be willing to sit with me. Is there a Jim here or a James who's not willing to sit with me just out of curiosity? No. I was going with a common name. Okay. What? We'll take it. <laughs> mm. What's your first name? Jeremy. Jeremy. Nice to meet you, Jeremy. So I'm going to put you in this chair. And you're going to turn. We're going to face each other for this one. Uh, so. Jeremy and I have never met before, right, Jeremy? Not to my memory. Not to my memory either. And there's some things I already know about Jeremy, right? First of all, he's got a kind of excitement quality that we all, all can see and feel, right? I see he's wearing a, a shirt with sprinkles on it. This is Jeremy with myself. There are hearts on it. He's got a smile. These are all things that anyone can note, and I've already noted. Um, but when I do what I'm about to do, even though I have all that information at my disposal, as all of us do, I actually try to clear it out. So I'm doing the opposite of a cold reading. I'm trying to ignore all of the information that I got on the spot by looking at somebody so that I can be clear with what's going on in my body. And I'm going to both talk you through how I do this and also do the, do the reading. And Jeremy, you don't have to do anything other than pay attention to me. And you don't have to do that if you don't want to. But if you do, it'll be more interesting for the audience later because then you can reflect on it. Um, but you can be however you want. 
So the first thing I do is tune into how I myself am feeling. And I feel a little bit of anxiety in the front of my chest. This has nothing to do with Jeremy. Um, this is just me. I feel a little tense behind my head. And then other than that, I feel pretty calm. And that's how I am, David. And the reason I do that is because the more I'm tuned in with how I myself am feeling, the more able I'll be to differentiate my experience from Jeremy's when I consciously invite Jeremy's experience into me. Now I'm just taking a moment to center myself. And for those of you who do this kind of work, you might be intrigued to know that I am envisioning a kind of bubble around me and Jeremy so that the little energetic arrows coming my way bounce off instead of affecting our dynamic. One of the articles of faith here for more analytical minded folk is that there is a relationship between envisioning energetic dynamics and them actually being effective. So if I envision a bubble, uh, some part of me goes, who cares? Um, and another part of me actually knows that that's real. So in this realm, I play in the world that that's real, but I accept that in another realm, it's just a bunch of words. Okay, so now I feel centered and ready. I haven't yet paid any attention to Jeremy, but at this moment, Jeremy, can I have your hand? My subjective experience is of allowing something of Jeremy into my system. It's much more like relaxing into something than it is like trying to get something. So there's a spaciousness I'm creating in myself very gently. There's nothing really intense going on in me. I'm just gently opening to this energy that is Jeremy's. And as I do that, my body transforms into something like this, which I'll interpret for those who can't see it. Um, my body immediately like, pushes itself upward. I'm tilting forward. There's a little bit of nervous energy in me. It wasn't the anxiety that I felt in myself a minute ago. It has a different quality. It's more hyper than my anxiety. And a smile comes across my face, and I'm leaning forward, and I feel a kind of nervous excitement not overwhelming, but mild nervous excitement, um, maybe even a little giddiness, and a fair amount of curiosity. And that's what I'm feeling, you're feeling right now, Jeremy. And you don't have to give me any uh, validation yet. Um, we'll get to that at the end. And of course, everything I said matches what I saw of Jeremy, but I'm not accessing this information in that way. I'm not remembering from a minute ago. I'm just interpreting what my body is experiencing. And can I have your hand again, Jeremy? Thank you. So now I'm asking myself, what's happening with Jeremy these days? How's Jeremy doing? Literally, my mind is asking itself that, and then once again, I'm just allowing the answer to come into my system. And then I get this feeling. And I would experience uh, the sub I have this subtle feeling of really wanting, wanting to connect. It's the kind of connection one might have with one's purpose. It feels like yearning. And I can feel in Jeremy, or at least my experience of Jeremy, this deep desire for answers and a real openness to it. That was the first thing that I felt as I felt into what's happening with Jeremy beyond just the excitement of this moment. And then as I go, uh, then I ask myself, is anything else going on? And I get this feeling and it's a feeling of, it's a feeling, sound okay? Good? Yeah, okay. It's a feeling of impatience. I want something to happen 
now. Why is this taking so long? That's the feeling I have. And now I, David, am becoming self-conscious about the shift in audio. I'm feeling a little nervousness around it. I start, my head is spinning a little bit, like can they still hear me? Uh, is this okay? And the reason I'm noting this is because as my own experience comes into clarity, I then can know that this is not Jeremy. Jeremy is not insecure about the audio right now, or, although he may be, but that's not the experience I'm checking into. So now I'm nervously adjusting it, hoping to come back to the previous sound, which sounds like this. As you can tell, this is really ultimately about tuning into the subtle experience one is having oneself. And through that, that's what is the gateway for learning to understand another person's experience. So back to Jeremy. Since I've lost my train of thought, I use Jeremy's hand to come back to him. And I feel confused. Again, not in this moment, but more like generally I can say here's where Jeremy's at. Jeremy is yearning for a higher order of truth, really open to it. He's also got a lot of impatience and he's confused. Uh, this confusion is not overwhelming. He's not spinning too much. Uh, but he's like, I don't know. I'm not sure. What do I do? Um, okay. I'm sitting here debating whether to share something with everyone, and I'm deciding to do it, which is in this process... Uh, other forms of information sometimes come in. And that's a natural part of really opening up to another person. We've left the realm sometimes, we leave the realm sometimes of physiological experience of another and just get information. And I was just hearing in my ear, I feel underutilized, I feel underutilized, I feel underutilized. So I'm trusting that that since I personally, David, I don't really feel underutilized. Uh, that doesn't feel like a projection. I'm trusting that that information may have meaning for, for Jeremy. And now I'm going to go deeper beyond what's been happening with you of late and into what's happening with you at a deeper level. I'm curling into myself, and I feel like it's really not safe to share what's going on at a deeper level. And I'm talking here a little bit as Jeremy, um, or as you, Jeremy. Uh, I'm going to talk to you. I feel like on, a, on quite a deep level, there's the part of you you're really not willing to share yet. Uh, you seem... Um, outgoing and extroverted and energetic uh, and you're going through a process whereby you're really starting to open up to new possibilities but on a deeper level I can feel this um, need to hide away uh, and not really be seen and there's a place that I'm touching where I feel like you're you're not you don't yet have access to and so I'm delicately um, skirting around it the it's like the, the the exuberant extroverted playful person that I see and that is totally true to you has another component that hides away and is actually ex extremely um, self, judgmental of self and believes on a very deep level that you can't show that person yet. And as I start to say that, I feel a tear, an actual tear in my eye um, because there is a lot of sadness around this part.
And now I'm going to travel past these deeper elements and into what I experience to be your core essence, your, your who you are by nature. And it's my sense that this, what I'm about to describe of you, is true of you, irrespective of anything that could have ever happened to you. This is just who you are, and it will be who you are. That's my sense. And that is that you are, and as I tune into it, I get this kind of feeling, an adventurer, an explorer, somebody who needs to take on new experiences and then share them. Uh, and that you wouldn't be happy unless you were having a lot of novelty and living at a fairly fast clip and then bringing those experiences to others. That's my sense of you. Um, and if I could offer you, Jeremy, just the, a little bit of guidance if you're, uh, if you're willing, it would be, this is very gentle guidance, it would be that you're starting to be ready. You're getting ready. You're getting ready to look inward into some of those darker places. And that you're, as you start to do that, just to do that very gently. So I'm, I'm validating, if you've had it, the urge to do some of that deeper introspection. And I'm suggesting that the more gentle, the more gentle you do it, the more fruitful that will be. And a question that might be useful in exploring that is what am I what do I feel like I need to hide from people you don't have to force an answer to that it would just be something that would come up slowly over time as you invite that question in and before I turn it over to Jeremy to give your thoughts and sharing um, actually no that's all I'll do so, Jeremy, the, the, if we can get you a mic, I think we can. High five, thanks. Just share what your experience of that was. That was interesting. Mm. <laughs> thanks. Very novel. I can't wait to relay the information to other people. Um, no, I think that was pretty spot on, man. I do experience a lot of those things, and I do have a lot of energy a lot of times and want to express it intensely because I'm so excited for life, but I know that uh, in certain situations, that's probably not the best case, and I think, like, I'm, you know, I like to be silly, but in, like, at a more professional level, we got to kind of keep that under wraps, but the, in the workplace, I'm pretty pretty uh, outgoing and social, and I kind of make our first impressions, like, really... Um, not necessarily silly, but I, you know, I treat everybody like family immediately. Like I let them know that you know everything's cool, no matter like who they are and what they are. I'm going to be myself, so I expect them to be the same way. But I could probably take it to the next level, but I don't. <laughs> um, and yeah, there's always some aspect of sadness in my life, I suppose, and that's kind of the way life is. There's some sadness, a lot of it. Um, and that's okay. You know, it's a beautiful thing to be experiencing those things and being a really empathetic being and, and just feel. I love it. And uh, I embrace it. And um, yeah, I guess I'm shy too. I definitely, even though I, I do a really good job of hiding it, um, definitely have a part of myself that I, I keep under wraps until, you know, the, the moment strikes and then I can wow people. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jeremy. Thank, Thank you, you for David. coming up. This has been amazing. You're Thank really you. a good guy to sit with. <laughs> Thanks, man. Mm. Appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there were some things that felt like they tracked between what I said and what Jeremy said. Then there were some things that felt kind of jagged. Maybe that's kind of what I was saying. Maybe that's kind of what he was saying. Then there were some of you who, with me, felt, especially when he was talking about that sadness, he wasn't quite willing, able yet. Sorry, Jeremy. 
to to really feel into that, like almost like he was bouncing off of it. There it was, and then it, and no, and that seemed to track very well with what I was what I was feeling. Um, so you can see the the dance here. It's my experience, his experience, filtered through my understanding, filtered through his understanding. Some things really match up. Some things bounce off. Who the hell knows, really? But there's some value, I think, in, in this kind of exploration. Um, and there's something that always comes up, which is, well, couldn't that have applied to anybody, everything I said? And I would say, no, it couldn't have. Um, but there are some relatively common experiences that we share, and so be it. Uh, but I've done enough of these readings that they are different enough that if I did three or five, you would see how different they are and that a lot of it is really based on the person and our respective interpretations of that person's understanding or experience. Ah, demonstration over. So now, actually, why don't I just take I think, does anyone have a burning question where they just don't know what the hell's going on and they feel like they need to ask it? Or does now feel like the moment to go into your, your turn? What do you guys think? Yeah. Can't hear you. Oh, um, it, it wouldn't. To my experience is: uh, to what extent does my perception of the person influence what I'm saying? Uh, my experience is very little, and that I'm trying to work away from that. And uh, I have done these blindfolded, and it's just as effective, although harder to explain. So I tend, I tend not to do them blindfolded because it raises all sorts of other odd questions. But it's the same experience for me. Um, maybe two more questions, and then we'll go switch switch gears. Yeah. The way I take in information, the way we take in information. Okay, um, my question uh, or comment was um, on on the contrary, because we read information through all our senses, it's almost, um, um, maybe the reading is better because you're able to, I'm saying it's a good thing, right? It helps us empathy is maybe easier or better with by looking by looking at it through all our senses yeah i agree with you empathy is better if you take in all the senses there's no reason to exclude senses in trying to understand or feel into what another person is experiencing the advantage of what i was this kind of process is it allows for us to focus on what is happening more subtly that we might not otherwise notice whereas if you're taking in information visually, you're so used to processing that information in a certain way, it might be too loud for you to process what's happening more subtly. And then last question, yeah. One thing to consider is how much my perception may have affected Jeremy. You mean, dur you mean at the end? Yeah. I think that's almost certainly happening. How could you not be hearing stuff about yourself that's relatively deep and have that not affect you? I'm, my subjective experience is that I'm tuning into different, it almost feels like layers of an onion. And so I'm not paying attention anymore to the frequency at which he's having an experience right here. So if he switches into, oh my God, I don't want him to see, or I don't want him to see that, I'm not having that experience so much as I'm in the thing that I'm trying to see. But yeah, abs absolutely, and these are great questions. So, okay. So how does physical proximity uh, affect my ability? Um, 
accuracy seems to decrease the farther away I go. So it's harder for me to say tune into somebody in this audience without them sitting here than it would be to tune in here. But the, the, the experience I'm having is not that different and I think I can do it. So subjectively, it seems to me that I'm tuning into some kind of cosmic address and I'm reading information there. Although that's hard to swallow. So we can go with the other answer, which is that it's nice to feel into what they're doing right there in front of me. <laughs> uh, okay, last one. And then I want to switch, switch gears. What's the, what's my sense of the, how much of this is innate, how much of this can be learned? I think it's both, like anything. I like the analogy of m music. I, I am, don't have any musical talents as far as I can tell, but if like I spend enough time at the piano, I could probably play something half decent. Something like that is probably happening here, where anyone, if, if, unless you're a sociopath, in fact, maybe even if you are a sociopath, you have the capacity to feel what another person is feeling. Some people are gonna be naturally more sensitive, but even if you're naturally more sensitive and you ever do anything about it, it might never serve you. Okay, so with that, um, I'm going to experiment here with you and uh, guide you into a similar process. And what I did is the product of probably a hypersensitivity to begin with, uh, a fair amount of practice, and a natural ability to express subtle things relatively well. And I don't want you to hold yourself to any of those standards. All we're aiming for here is to sense whether there is any meaningful shift in your experience by virtue of being in proximity to another person and whether that subtle shift has any meaning whatsoever. That's all we're playing with. And if we come away from this partner experience that we're about to do going, wow, I felt this and that matched that, that's awesome, that's cool. And if we don't, there's value even in just practicing and playing in these subtle realms, even just opening your mind to the possibility that information travels in ways we don't normally think it does, that in itself I find to be meaningful. Okay, so yes, sure. Okay, cool. Can I repeat the target goal? The target, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pair you, I'm going to take you guys on a little walk, then we're going to pair you up, then I'm going to have you tune into your partner and have your partner tune into you, and you're going to share what it is you're experienced, and then you're going to compare notes. There's going to be a natural impulse to want to do a great job of this, to try to get the right thing, push, and that's not the intent here. The intent here, to take the roundabout way to answer your question, is merely to explore the possibility that information travels in this way. And to compare what subtle shift we may experience against what is true for the person we're sitting with. If something out of that dynamic is interesting, that to me is a success. So it's more about the exploration than it is about the getting anything right. And you saw, I, I'm quite sure I've done this more than anybody else in the room, and you saw how much I said didn't even quite really match up with Jeremy. So I'm learning and making mistakes and playing around too. Okay, I trust that your question is gonna help us in this next experiment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we are going to, I promise you I won't, I won't leave you uh, in that space and that we will release whatever we pick up and that's part of my job to do that. So um, to the extent that you trust my capacity to hold this container, I promise you that what you're going to take on will be safe and that uh, I will teach you how to release it in the moment. Is there any other question before we uh, get started? I will guide you each step of the way, but if something's unclear, let me know. Ah. Mm -hmm. 
I'm glad that that part's done, honestly. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to go on another little walking meditation. But the point of this walking meditation is to become centered in ourselves and to know what we ourselves are feeling before we set, connect with a partner. So I'm going to ask you once again to stand up and to move your chairs to the side. And this time, you're going to go walking, but don't connect with anybody else. Just stay in your own world. Keep space from people. And feel, as if you can, how you yourself are feeling. And you might notice as you pass people that subtle shifts are happening. Could be that the person you pass means something to you or is somehow familiar and so there's a shift or it could be that uh, you're actually doing what we were talking about. You're picking up their field. And that's great. Notice how you come back to your own center, how you come back to your own feeling that's yours. And now I want you to separate out from people. Find as much space in the room as you can that's just yours. Come into your own. And when you're there, I want you to close your eyes when you're in your own space and imagine with me a little bubble around you. And this bubble is shielding you from anybody else's stuff right now. You're just in your own field. And if you don't, if you're not able to imagine that bubble, that's okay. Trust that with my words that's happening. And if you can't trust that, that's okay too. Don't believe me. But imagine if you can, this bubble around you. And this bubble has another amazing quality. It filters out even my energy. So you're hearing my words, you're understanding what I'm saying, but you're not taking in me. I'm bouncing right off you, bouncing right off that bubble. And take a little mental note with your eyes closed inside the bubble how you feel in your body. See if you notice anything that's really loud in there, anything that's really wanting attention. Just make a note of it. That's there. That's yours. And now see what the subtle feeling is of being in your body the way your energy is flowing in your own body, how you feel. Tune into how you're feeling emotionally. Don't have to put any words to it yet. Just allow whatever you're feeling to be how you're feeling and see if it has a, a place in the body or places in the body. Is it pulling you in any direction? Does it have a temperature? And take a note of that. Surveying yourself, physical, emotional. This is how you're feeling right now, as far as you can feel it. And if you're feeling very, very little right now or nothing, that's exactly how you're feeling. Just feel that nothingness that you're feeling. And if you're feeling a lot, then feel a lot. You're just noticing. All right. Now, your eyes are still closed and in a second, you're going to open your eyes, but not yet. And when you open your eyes, you're going to make eye contact with somebody. And whoever you first make eye contact with is your partner. And if you don't have a partner because the people around you have all made eye contact with, 
each other and you haven't made eye contact with anyone, then you're going to raise your hand and find somebody else raising their hand. So we'll start now. Open your eyes and find your partner. Does anyone not have a partner? No. Find find a partner by ra by with raised hands. And I want you and your partner to go find a space that feels like it's for the two of you. So pick a spot on the floor or chairs or wherever you want. Come to a consensus between the two of you and find a spot that's yours. But you want to be within earshot. Okay. All right. You guys have just started talking to each other, so I want you, based on the little information you have of each other, assuming you don't know each other, to decide which of you two is naturally more talkative. Come to an agreement of that based on the last few seconds. All right, that's a, that's, I think you guys have got it. If you're, all right, come back, to, come back to me now. I realize I invited that, but now we refocus on the exercise at hand. And whichever, come back, come back. Whichever, whichever one of you is naturally less talkative, is going to uh, go first. And whichever one of you is naturally more talkative is going to start by doing nothing. So if you're going first, I want you to close your eyes with me. If you're doing nothing, you can leave your eyes open, or closed, or whatever you feel like doing. Just be comfortable. And if your eyes are closed and you're going first, I want you to get into a position where you feel open to receive, whatever that means to you. Now you have your eyes closed and you're having all sorts of feelings right now. So I want you to take a note of them. How are you feeling right now in your body? Could be that you've already started to take on something of the energy of the person you're sitting with. Or it could be that you're in anticipation of that. Could be that the way you're sitting feels like something standing didn't feel like. Well, that's almost certainly true. So that's what you're taking a note of now. And we don't have to know yet whether what we're feeling is because of the experience we're in right now or because of our partner. We're not worried about that. We're just worried about the little shifts that are happening. And by worried, I just mean we're taking note. These little subtle experiences could be pinpricks, could be a little tension, could be a newfound ease, could be anything. So with that, I'm going to call you with your eyes closed, the receiver. Why don't you open up one of your hands, whatever feels like the right hand to receive for you is. And the person doing nothing, you have your one and only job is to offer your hands to the receiver's hand. And receiver, you're going to dissolve that bubble that you put up if you haven't already. And trusting me that we will be able to let go of whatever we take on now, we're going to just allow. Allowing is a very passive process. 
It's happening even as I use my voice. You don't have to do anything. In fact, my voice is allowing you to allow. And just feel if anything is happening. And I'm just going to give you a minute to feel into that. As your mind starts to interpret it, that's fine. But come back to, if you can, any subtle feelings. They could be physical or emotional, or somewhere in between. Take a few more seconds. And if information is coming to you in other ways, maybe you're hearing things or seeing things, that's okay. We'll play there too. Allow those intuitions to appear as they do. Make a note of them. And you're here receiving whatever information is coming to you about this other person who you're sitting with. We're just allowing. If you get distracted, that's totally cool. Just come back. another few seconds here. You don't have to go out and get anything. You're just seeing what shows up, paying attention as it does. Now, just make a mental note of some of the things that came up for you as you were feeling into this. So you have it in your minds. You can start putting some language to it in your head. All right. Now take your hand back gently. Now, person doing nothing, you're going to have a job in a second. Receiver, you're still with your eyes closed, allowing and listening and taking notes. Person doing nothing, as the receiver describes what it is they felt and experienced, your job is just to listen. Try not to have any reaction. Just listen, and if you need to understand something you didn't follow, you can say, say more about that. Or if you're interested, you can say, say more about that. But you don't want to say yes or no, because you don't want to color the person's experience. You just want them to share what it is they felt. And then if you feel like probing a little bit, you can go for it. All right, so now, receiver, you can open your eyes and share any of the experiences you had Subtle, not subtle, anything you got, just let it go. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I want everyone who is just receiving, and I'll join you to stand up. And if you were just, if you had the other job, you just hang out. So you've just taken on somebody else's something or other. We don't even know what that something or other is. I really don't like the word energy, but I just can't come up with a better one. We've taken on, so we're going to release it, like I promised. And we're going to release it first by just wiping it off. The mind works in metaphors, right? So 
we're telling our mind by doing this that we're releasing what we just picked up. There's also something happening in my voice by virtue of guiding this. Well, that's my intention, and that intention is being suffused in the room, that we are hereby releasing what we've picked up. Oh. Some of you might still feel like you've got some of it. So do you feel like jumping around or moving around? That's good. I feel like spilling water, apparently. <laughs> and letting go. And now, I want you to close your eyes, you who are just receiving. And just in case that wasn't enough, just in case, we're going to imagine releasing all of the stuff that we just picked up from our wonderful partner down and out through the bottom of our feet. And coming back to ourselves. All right. Is there anyone who just did that who still has the experience of having somebody else's field within them? That that felt incomplete? Thank you. Sorry about that, Josh. Did that feel incomplete? Honestly, because sometimes that does feel incomplete. Yeah. It's a little bit. Okay. Do you have an intuition around what would help you release what's left? Okay, so let's imagine, for those of you who might feel similarly to my friend here, if you do, we're going to imagine that this mesh that we've just picked up is being pushed out. Is that right? Did I get that right? So let's, let's, in my ideal world, you say it in such a way that I understand it so completely that I can lead it. I'm trying to get there, but I'm not quite there. You want to try it again? Yeah, can you, do you think you have it in you to lead this for those people who share this feeling of still having picked up stuff? Sure. Yeah, go um, for it. Okay, so if you still feel like you are carrying anything with you, maybe identify where it is in your body and what it looks and feels like to you, um, whatever that may be. And then allow for you to kind of let yourself push it out and at the same time open up a channel underneath your feet that is like a cork that you're pulling maybe out of your bathtub when all of the water rushes out and all of this energy is rushing out of your feet and there is a vacuum a vortex for it to go into and at the same time you're pushing it out of yourself and letting it drain and flow so it's being pulled out of you and you're pushing it out of you at the same time, gently, lovingly, peacefully, very calm. And just you're letting it flow. You're letting everything dump. And it just moves. And as you inhale, something is fresh. And as you exhale, you're soften and everything left over releases. Awesome. Thank you. Did you take your own medicine there? Do you feel better? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, so, so we can sit back down in front of your partner. And I want to add that if you still feel something, um, it's my job to work with that. So please come up to me later at the very end, and I want to help. Uh, I'm responsible for this. So... Uh, now we're going to switch. So if you were just receiving, now your job is to do nothing. And if you were just doing nothing, your job now is to receive. So res new receivers, you're going to close your eyes with me. And you're going to get into a position that feels like you're ready to receive. Mm. 
And then you're going to open your hand up. And your partner now will give you their hands. And just by me saying so, you're allowing the energy of your partner into your system. It's happening all on its own. And you can maybe open up to it a little bit. and feel any shifts that might be happening physically. Paying real close attention to your body. any shifts that might be happening emotionally. Could be really subtle. Could be so subtle you're like, no, it doesn't mean anything. That's nothing. Take that little bit of nothing and feel it. Maybe it's not nothing. Just keep noticing and allowing, allowing and noticing. We'll try a little extra experiment this time. Imagine that you're feeling into something that's been happening over the last few weeks with this person. This is their experience of late. See if that creates anything, any shift in you with that invitation. And who knows, maybe information is coming in different ways. Maybe you're hearing something or seeing something. We're going to embrace that for a little bit here. And we're still paying attention to any subtle shifts too. Allowing, not forcing, and if we get tired, taking a break. Our attention can soften. No pushing ourselves. Just give it another few seconds. Keeping your eyes closed and take your hand back and make any notes of what you felt or saw along the way. Just in your own mind. And the same principles apply here. If you were just doing nothing, your job is just to listen. If something's unclear or you're very curious, ask. But don't say right, wrong. Don't give any validation 
to what they're saying. Just allow them to express their own experience while trying to tamper it as little as possible with what you bring forth, with what you respond with. And if you were just doing the receiving, now is the moment to open your eyes. And for the next couple minutes, share whatever came up for you, subtle, not subtle, as you feel like it. We're wrapping up. All right. So, if you were just receiving, you're going to stand up with me. We remember the drill. You're probably used to going first in things, so this will be slightly different. <laughs> Uh, so, let's start with just wiping down uh, bodies, wiping off, and imagine this time, imagine you're actually doing it. Imagine everything that you picked up is actually coming off you. See it as something, if you can visualize. And if you can't, trust that as I'm saying it, it's happening. Now. If it feels right, if you feel like there's nice to be more, you might want to jump around, check your hands. I'm less mobile than I would be because of this mic, but you can be more mobile than me. Yeah. And now with me, okay, let's, everyone seems to want to breathe, so maybe let's do that. Just take a breath in. <sighs> And out. In. <sighs> and take a last big breath at your own pace. And now let's imagine all the stuff we just picked up from our wonderful partner. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not ours. So we're going to imagine whatever's left of it going down our body, down our legs, and out through our feet, and out. You can come back to me. As last time, is there anybody here who still feels maybe on the more sensitive side, they're still Something there. Okay. And again, if you if something is lingering from this and you want to work it out, please come find me after. But otherwise, I'm going to trust. So you come, come back down to your seat with your partner. And this is the fun part. So we're going to go back to the original order of things. And you who were the receiver first, the less talkative one. I've designed this so you talk first. <laughs> and why don't you, wait, did I say that right? No, hold on. The receiver, I did this all wrong. Let's see. Okay, the, res the person who is receiving first is going to hear the feedback from the person who was doing nothing first. That's right, right? Go on. Intuitively, right? Yeah, okay. Either way, is better. Either way is better. My intent is to go back to the original, the first, uh, the first way. Did I got that, Andrew? Okay. Okay, so we're going to go back to the first way. So the person who was doing nothing the first time is now going to have the joy of sharing your experience of hearing what this person was saying with particular attention to anything that matched. So, oh, you said this, and that actually relates to this in my world. Um, does that make sense? Yeah? Okay. So share away. And feel free to ask whatever you want. This can flow. Okay. <coughs> Just 
Interesting? Yeah. Is there somebody here who'd like to share something that was like, whoa, that was really weird or cool or interesting, and people could know about that? Anybody? Can we get a mic to you? Thank you. Oh. So, um, my partner, the first thing that she said was she felt as though her rib cage, um, she didn't have enough room like to breathe. There wasn't enough kind of space for her to intake that air. And what's really interesting about that is she had no clue about this with me. Um, I have cystic fibrosis. And to me, it's a pretty normal feeling. And I feel like fine most days. I'm very blessed to be as healthy as I am. But for someone who doesn't have that and has normal lungs and normal experience, that's exactly what that might feel like, an inability to get enough air or even get the oxygen out of that air. Awesome. Can I ask your partner, how did that, how did, how did that information come to you? Or how did that, what was that like for you, that moment? Um, I was sitting down. I could feel my pants kind of cutting off my stomach, which is like half of the breath when we fully expand. And my rib cage felt, it was short. I could feel the bralette, but it was more than that. It wasn't the bralette causing restriction. It was my lungs being too small for the breath that I needed. And like my soul body was like trying to reach out from the inside and push against my lungs and rib cage to get more air, to get more space. And I just couldn't get enough of what I needed. It was frustrating. And then I had to like come back in and try to find more space in other parts of my body to breathe and just deal with the frustration of being locked inside of something that was too small. And it looked kind of blue-green like an x-ray. Mm. That makes sense. Amazing. Anybody else want to share a, an experience? I think it was d down here in the front. Did I see you correctly? Did you want to share? Sorry. I don't know if everyone can hear me. I didn't really want to follow that up after hearing that. That's pretty, pretty freaking incredible. Um, I actually, I, I think that some people up here probably heard me because at one point I kind of like had to reach my hand back and I was like, ow. Um, I don't, can't really, like essentially what it was, was I just, my hand started to get really, really hot and it was like spreading up through my arm and it almost felt like I was being shocked. And then I actually have a spot right on the inside of my hand that was like an actual red spot where it felt like I'd been burnt. Um, and I mean, not, not like a bad burn, but yeah, right. You're right. Well, uh, you can't really see it anymore, but um, we were kind of reveling over that for a minute. But I don't know if you want to share anything about that that we talked about, but... Um, oh, no, I just, like, I feel like I'm finally coming alive and I'm just full of, like, life. So, <laughs> I think it is, like, it did transfer, like, that energy. Like, I've been, like, shut down for a, quite a while and now I'm, like, experiencing the world and living. So, I think it did transfer. <laughs> and then also, it was interesting for, with her... Cause, you take the mic. Yeah. Yes. So I've been practicing building a new bubble for me, like my own adult bubble. And I have been letting go of the child self. And so I have not actually had a bubble for a bit. And this, like, I got to build it here. And so when I did her, I was like, nothing came in. And it was like, so her, I felt her hand, no body, but I felt really safe and light and nothing was coming in, but it also was her because she's experiencing that right now too with the letting go and just being. So I think, and I like, I don't know what it was, but it was like both of us where I didn't let anything in, but she also was not, you know, taking either because I'm used to being taken from. <laughs> so, uh, cool. Awesome. Awesome. How about one more share over, over here? Um, so I was the receiver first. And um, what I felt is a lot of kindness and a loving. 
through my partner, and it touches my heart. And I can just feel from her hand, the energy goes through my arm and go to my heart. It just touches my heart. And then I can't help, I cried. And I just cried a lot until the end. But in the middle, I, feel, I felt a little shift of curiosity. But then I continue to feel being cradled as like a baby. She's giving me love and can kindness. It was so beautiful. Um, Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my perspective is, was just that, like, like that, and I was sharing. It's like that's that's how I want to live my life. So it was, it was just like, um, like that's the kind of person I want to be, right? Like to to walk around with an open heart. So that kind of reflection um, was just really beautiful. It's like, oh, I'm doing it, you know? Like I'm I'm living the way I want to live. So, like that was, that was cool. Yeah, and then you, and then um, Mary's experience. So um, so she, I just saw a vision, you know. I just always had that, and then um, you know she um, she reflected back that you know she actually has a vision for her life, and you know some some different ways and avenues that she's going into and checking out. So that just matched up. I didn't have I didn't know what that vision was, but it mirrored what she was, you know, that she had something in mind for herself. I'm not going to reveal that because I feel like that's for you to reveal and, and step into. But yeah, awesome. Thank you. Thank you to the three groups that shared. And um, just really enjoying, I'm really enjoying bringing awareness to how this information moves through us all the time and how meaningful it can be to be open to another person and then to share what it is we're feeling in a safe space. Uh, and I invite us to notice that too, because it's really rare. If you think about how rarely you actually just really pay attention to another person and in invite what's happening with them into you and see what that means, how often do we do that and how much can be had from that kind of interaction? Um, Mikey came up to me and said, there are a lot of people in this room who are empaths and who are feeling overwhelmed by this kind of thing all the time. And could I offer some tips? And so I want to do that. But I think first I want to invite the partners to say whatever last little bit you might have to say to each other to bring this, this little sharing with, you've had with each other to a close. You obviously can reconnect later, but just wrap it up in a nice way. Or if you feel like in a not nice way, wrap it up that way too. Just. All right, ending the nice wrap up now and coming back to me. Good job, Jordan. Um, yeah. All right, so I want to talk, talk for just a minute. about boundaries. This is something we could talk about at, at length. But let me just actually get a feeling for, for the room. How many people are here going, this is the kind of experience I'm frequently overwhelmed by, I don't know how to handle, I'm getting all this information, I can't process it, it's too much. How many people relate to that? Huh. Just a few. No. I didn't do it, I didn't do it right, did I? Oh, missed the question. How many people relate to the idea that this, that you're constantly absorbing other people's stuff and you don't know what to do about it? Uh -huh. So we've gone all the way from, this is an issue that we need to work on, all the way to the other end of the spectrum because I think it's way fun over here where we start to explore what we can do on the positive end of this awesome superpower that I think so many of us, if not all of us, have. And I skipped 
deliberately, all of the stuff that we might need to do to keep ourselves um, regulated and healthy as we do this kind of thing unconsciously throughout the day. And I'll just offer a few little pieces of advice along those lines. And the first is what we've just already done, actually, just by being in this room. And maybe this is the most important, if nothing else. It's just to validate for ourselves the reality of these experiences. Let's say that again. It's almost the most important thing is just to validate the reality of these experiences. More healing than any tool or technique or meditation I've done has just been to own the fact that this is the world I'm swimming in, these are the experiences I'm having day to day and that they matter. Even if I couldn't, and now I can, but even if I couldn't then put words to it. And merely by doing that, we're stepping into our own power in a new way, and we're, we're setting boundaries for ourselves because we're saying we're real. This experience is real. And we've already done that. This has already happened in this room, so no need to do anything. But beyond that, just as important is taking mental notes of where you're actually at with things. So if you are feeling overwhelmed or drained, that's real, and that's worth taking a note of. It might be hard to withdraw from the situation or the situations that are making you feel overwhelmed and drained. That might not be possible yet. But as a good start, if you are feeling overwhelmed or drained, just to say to myself or yourself, I am now overwhelmed and drained and I don't know what to do about it, is really positive. It gives you a place to come from of power because now you're owning your experience, at least internally. And then the next step is really hard. Once you've acknowledged that you're overwhelmed and drained sometimes, how do you shift your behavior so that that happens less often? And I think the most important thing here is reconciling yourself to constant feelings of guilt that you will not be able to alleviate. The reason why people tend to get drained as empaths is because we tend to tend to people naturally. We have a good intuition about what people need and we want to deliver it even at our own expense. When we start to disentangle from people's needs to take care of ourselves, what inevitably shows up is a lot of guilt, feelings that I'm abandoning this person. So you have this choice that, constant, that I'm constantly faced with. Do I tend to this person's need or what I sense is this person's need on a deep level? Or do I check out from this situation in a way that might be more nurturing for me but that causes all of this guilt? So you want to feel that that guilt ain't going anywhere, at least for a while. It's very deep. You want to feel that guilt and not act from it immediately. So learning how to feel the guilt you're feeling without being enslaved by it is the most important way to regulate your experience with other people if you're an empath and you're feeling overwhelmed and drained. And then the last thing, the last little piece that's really helpful is a bunch of techniques and tools, some of which you've seen today, that are like flushing energy out through your system, creating bubbles, um, envisioning white light coming down, uh, Epsom salt baths, time in nature, hanging out with dogs. The reason I throw these out really quickly is it really doesn't matter. It's whatever works for you. So I have my tricks that feel really good for me. I know a lot of empaths feel really good around animals. That becomes like their drain. It centers them, it clears them out. I am not one of them. I go the opposite direction around animals. It doesn't work for me, but if it works for you, that's wonderful. So you want to go on your own little path to see what is grounding and nurturing for you if you tend to feel overwhelmed by other people's stuff. And I guess maybe the last piece, I know I said the last piece, the last piece ago, but another last piece is um, also what we've been doing here is starting to take joy in it. I think that in itself can be healing because you're signaling to yourself that this stuff matters and that you matter and that validation might in itself um, be nurturing and help offset some of that feeling of overwhelm. What you're doing in these subtle planes matters and if you have a deep intuition about over here about what somebody's essence is and you can reflect that back to them, that's really powerful and that matters even if it's not something we readily measure these days. Um, so that's my tips and tricks for empaths. And uh, I also feel like adding by way of awkward self-promotion, but it feels just so relevant 
that I taught a class on this very same thing. And uh, you can download it on my website. This feels so awkward, but like I think it's the right thing to do. OK, so it's empath.nyc. And you can find a class I taught on this very subject. And you can also, this is the self-deprecating, I can't handle that kind of self-promotion aspect of me showing up. You can also just Google uh, how to deal with being an empath. Um, and you'll get a lot of good information that way. But if you want my best tips and tricks, buy my class. Um, uh, any uh, questions? Yeah. How can you tell if you're, if you're really an empath and experiencing your own emotions or if it's your own psychosis? I'm trying to unpack that question and get to the place that's underneath the irony. Um, there's a, there's a, um, a level of, I say it like, self-abuse in that question. Like, uh, the implicit thing is that you might be psychotic. And um, before we worry about how to differentiate our experience from others, it's more central to our health to be as gentle with ourselves as possible, especially when we're coming at ourselves with that kind of approach, you know? Um, so rather than just answer your question, I want to say, uh, you don't strike me as psychotic. <laughs> and, uh, and be as nice to yourself as you can be if you start to believe that kind of thing about yourself. And then I'll, re I'll answer the actual question, which is um, the more you tune into your own experience, just like we were doing when we did the walk, um, the more you can tell what's yours and what's not. Everyone has their own sort of signature or their own signatures, the way they naturally are and radiate. And we don't even know our own because we're so disconnected from ourselves. But if you start to know your own, this is how I feel now, this is how I feel later, this is how I feel tomorrow, this is how happiness feels to me, this is how anger feels to me, you'll start to sense when, oh, this is actually not something native to me. This is like somebody else's smell. Uh, and over time, it'll get clearer and clearer. Yeah. So you're taking in other people's physical problems and it appears in your root and it's nothing you do deliberately and you don't know how to make it stop? Right. I would just be sitting there and like being electrocuted from my spine all the way up. Um, well, two things. So, uh, two things are happening in, in the story you just told. One is this incredible sensitivity to other people's physical experiences. And that's something I just want to honor and accept as true of your nervous system and gives you the capacity, probably in certain instances, to be really helpful to people by using that ability. And the second is this knee-jerk resistance to those experiences, like this sense of like, I don't want it, I don't want it, and that's uh, feels like it's coming from a kind of programming like I don't want I don't I don't want I don't want like something's wrong with you for having that and it, it, No, I don't feel that way at all. It just physically really hurts. It's like it's, it's I mean, I don't want to be very descriptive, but it really hurts It's like somebody sending like an electric shock up my like from my tailbone all the way up so it ow my son even sometimes will do right. it. He's like, Mom, look. I'm like, this might be a very <laughs> so. advanced question then. Um, Sorry, I don't know. Well, I, I, I kind of want to stick with what I was saying, even though you're rejecting it, because I feel compelled to it. It's like, like there's a problematizing of this phenomenon instead of an acceptance of it. And if you accept it, one, that this is that you're very sensitive, then you're like, okay, I'm going to limit the amount of 
experiences I have that put me in this situation and use it more um, gently. And two, I'm going to embrace that sometimes I have this incredible pain when other people have physical experiences. Welcome to my world. Yeah. And that could be an amazing world sometimes and a really painful world other times. Kind of like, so be it, you know? Or amazing, depending on your perspective. Okay, last question. I just wanted to add to that because I did share that I had a physical experience earlier and it's pretty common with me. And the way that I learned to handle that was rather than to not feel it, it was to let it flow through me. So when you're picking up that whatever that is, kind of like the way he's taught us is learning how to whatever it's like tapping or breath work or whatever it is to help just kind of release it as quickly as you want it to go. Okay, perfect. Better said. Form of embrace. Um, yeah, Mikey. And then I'll hand it off back to you. Oh, a burning question? Oh, wow. Uh, Careful, because she might feel burning. Here. Sometimes I think that, um, like, a janitor, like, a spiritual janitor, like, empathing and processing, like, I don't want to do it, you know? So, can you just a few quick words on that? Just so, like, I don't You don't want to do it? Yeah, I don't want a janitor for other people, you know? I just want to take care of my own stuff. And I don't want to process others' stuff, and I happen to do that quite often. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to turn it off, but do you know what I mean? Like, it can be overwhelming. Um, okay. There's such a thing as setting boundaries and being really clear with yourself around what you want to do and don't want to do. So, um, part of the tension you're experiencing is that you're not entirely clear moment to moment, day to day, what those boundaries are, even though you're clear up here that you're doing more than you want. So if you're like, this is actually as much as I want to hold for you and now I'm checking out, that would be a way to regulate this better. And then the other part of me is saying that what you're describing as a curse or a problem I've been going to great lengths to demonstrate is an ability or a gift and so so um, when you call it a janitor not that there's anything wrong with being a janitor God bless janitors but I think that there's something negative in that language and uh, and I would invite you to look more as, wow, I am empowered if I choose to be, or as I grow into this, to really heal what other people are going through by working with their experience in a way that very few people can. Uh, a janitor only comes from a janitor's cleanup stuff, so it wasn't actually a negative context is the way you're taking it. It's actually that. Okay. Well, I accept your correction. So uh, last, last thoughts from me. Like, by just taking it on and being like, I am sensitive. I do pick up on people's energy, and I like to clean. Make sure you take care of yourself. The way out is through. Own it. Figure out your boundaries and what we've been doing here. Finding out that it is a real thing, which helps validate it for all of us. Right? Thank you. Take it on. Thank you. I, I, like, that. I like that premise that the way out of it is through. And I also want to bring a little bit of compassion to the difficulty we have going through. So uh, resistance is also there for a really good reason. And so it's both that the way out is through, but that doesn't mean go put yourself in painful situations, go clean up everybody's stuff. It's like a little at a time, day at a time. If anyone has the perfect answer, they're most likely wrong and just find your own path as you go, easily and gently is how I like to do it. But if you like it hard and rough, then you can try it that way too, <laughs> and it might work for you. Um, so just want to say a few last things before I hand it off to Mikey to end, which is you can all find me on my website, which is empath.nyc. I feel compelled to say that um, I am uh, in the midst of putting up a play in New York where I tell the story of how I discovered I was an empath, talk about the power of that, and then do readings. Uh, so it's turning what you just saw into theater. 
and I am raising money for it through Kickstarter. So if you want to give me a tip for this evening, that would be amazing. That would be the way to do it. You can find it on my website, empath.nyc. It'll take you right to the Kickstarter, and I would appreciate that, even if you just took a look. Uh, and you can also find me on Instagram, uh, empathnyc. And I really appreciate it, and I'm happy to hand it back to Josh and Mike. So thank you guys so much. Thank you.